Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another tier list Tuesday. And in the most recent weeks, I've been doing this number one center, number one winger, number one defenseman, number one goalie tier list. So I thought today we'd go off ice and we're gonna be looking at the front office, the general managers, tier listing every single team's general manager. Obviously they only have one general manager instead of just number one general manager. So this is gonna be based on what they've done recently, how good I think they are. Yes, some of these guys have been there for like 10, 15 years. Not going to base it on their overall body of work. For example, like a Doug Armstrong with the St. Louis Blues has been fantastic overall, has kind of fallen apart of late. Going to be based going on right now. And when it comes to rebuilding general managers, I'm not going to throw any general manager that's either not in a playoff spot or never has made the playoffs in like the top tier or probably even the top two tiers because it is easy to look good when you're rebuilding, when you're just trading away guys for assets, drafting a shit ton of players. Maybe they'll pan out, maybe they won't. So if you see your favorite rebuilding general manager, Manager, maybe not be in those that upper echelon. That's the main reason why it's kind of unfair to compare a, a general manager that's been highly competitive, keeping his team competitive versus a guy that's has 70 is on pace for 72 goddamn points, but his players look good. Maybe they'll be good in two to three years. So that's some logic behind it. Here are the tiers elite, very good, solid and meh. And up first we have Barry Trotz. It's only his first year, but I'm going to throw him in good. I'm going to throw him in good. They had a very good off season. I thought they did a good job in the draft. Obviously that's to be determined, but when looking at them, their number, their big two, two, Two big moves this offseason was clearly signing Ryan O'Reilly four years, $4.5 million. He's going to go for 65, maybe even 70 points while making only $4.5 million. Gustav Nyquist has also been fantastic. So although it's not this long track record, and although Matt, buying out Matthew Shane... I still think it was kind of the right move in terms of long-term, even though he's looked fantastic. I don't think he'd look that good on the National Predators. So I think Barry Trotz has been a good general manager overall. Overall, Bill Armstrong, not Doug Armstrong. I actually no relation to Doug Armstrong. I'm going to throw him in solid. I think the Arizona Coyotes are building the right way. They have a very bright future. They have maybe even a top five future in the entire NHL for me. But considering this recent collapse, they're no longer really competitive team. They're not there quite yet. I think this offseason is going to be really important. He's going to have to make some big moves, especially after he signed a couple one-year deals last year that were whatever burgers. This year, he's actually going to have to make this team competitive. And if they're not above an 85, even definitely an 80 above an 80 point team, but hopefully above 85, then there's going to be some real heat on him in terms of they've been rebuilding for the past three, five, six, seven. They've made the playoffs once and it was only to kick COVID playoffs back in goddamn 2020. Uh, Bill Zito, Bill Zito, got to have him in elite. He's been there. He's They've been by far the most successful of their entire franchise history with him as a general manager recently. Trades like Sam Bennett for a second round pick, Brandon Montour for a third. Yes, the 2022 deadline wasn't the best between the uh, Ben Chirot deal and Claude Drew deal. They gave up a shit ton of assets then. But then the Matthew Kachuk trade, everybody thought that he was crazy, as well as the fact that they are yet again at the top of the NHL through basically his guidance for the most part. Gustav Forsling was a goddamn waiver pickup that he somehow got. OEL this year has looked great. Evan Rodriguez has looked great. He's an absolute stud, one of the best in the NHL. Don Sweeney, between very good and elite, he gets a lot of shit because, yes, he hasn't won a Stanley Cup, but he has kept his team very competitive. Last year at the deadline, I think he made, for the most part, the right moves. The team just kind of choked on their own when looking at it, getting a guy like Orlov that fit in really good with the Boston Bruins, getting some grit in a Tyler Bertuzzi, Garnet Hathaway. I, I still think he is a very good GM. You can maybe make an argument for elite. Boston has been, out of the non-Cup winners since he's been hired all the way back in like 2016, probably been the best team in the entire NHL, non-Cup winners. Uh, next up, we got Brian McClellan. McClellan, it's kind of tough for him. He's in a really tough situation because he has been there since 2013 or 2014. They were extremely elite, but their core has kind of just aged out. He He's done some solid deals recently. Dylan Schrome comes to mind. Uh, Anthony Manta trade didn't exactly work out the way that he wanted. Rasmus Sandin deal looks pretty solid. So I, I still think he's a solid general manager, but he just doesn't have that much flexibility. Uh, the Kemper signing has kind of blew up in his face. Kemper has not been that good. But overall, just solid. Back in the day, definitely one of the elite GMs. Craig Conroy. Conroy, I'm going to go... <sighs> I'm going to go solid as of right now. I do like the Jaeger Sharon Govich to fully trade. It looks like a pretty solid deal for them, even though Sharon Govich has slowed down. Uh, the Lindholm deal, I really liked getting a first round pick as well as a guy like Hunter Brustevich. Chris Tan update deal, you didn't get a first round pick, but you got a second, a former second, and a potential third. I think he's doing a pretty solid job. He's in a really tough spot, obviously, because the Flames are heading towards this kind of retool instead of maybe a more traditional rebuild. So he needs to keep the team somewhat competitive. That's kind of more from the higher ups instead of him, but I think he's done a solid job. Doug Armstrong. 
I'm going to put him in meh right now. Again, I think he's had a fantastic run, but they it's similarly to McClellan in the fact that their core just kind of aged out. Guys like Tarasenko, Ryan O'Reilly, Petrangelo left, but also some pretty mediocre deals were assigned. Tory Krug's deal is looking pretty horrendous. Braden Shen, Shen's deal is looking god-awful. Uh, Biddington's playing good this year, but most of his contract has been pretty brutal. So as a result, some of these Ill, ill-intentioned Ill deals, I liked what he did at the deadline last year, but overall trading for Kevin Hayes who's really been a nothing burger. I'm going to go with meh. Kyle Dubas, I think you make a solid argument for Meh as well. You look at what he did. I'm going to keep him in solid because I liked him during his Toronto. No, I'm going to bump him down to Meh. Screw it. You look at it. Eric Carlson trade wasn't that bad. He's playing pretty good. But to trade for Eric Carlson this summer, put your balls on balls on the table and be like, we're going all in this season. And then now it comes out that you're trading Jake Gensel. You're basically waving the white flag. That is an absolute disaster. Signings like Ryan Graves has looked like absolute shit. They gave, he gave Noel Achari like multiple term. He's basically nothing beyond a, an okay fourth liner at like $2 million for the next three years. Uh, Lars Zeller also got a long-term deal. I've been really disappointed in the moves that Kyle Dubas has made. And as a result, the Penguins are one of the most desperate, worst outlook teams in the entire NHL. When you look at the expectations were easy playoffs with an Eric Carlson, it has been a disaster. Lou Lamorello, I'm also going to go with Matt. I, I, the overall Lou tenure as an Islanders fan has been very successful. Obviously, five playoff series wins, four times making the Eastern Conference Final and then the one like Final Four. But right now, you look at last offseason, Scott Mayfield's seven-year deal at $3.5 million. That's one of the worst contracts in the entire NHL. Pierre Engvall got seven years at $3 million. Uh, uh, Bo Horvat deal did end up working out, but again, I didn't love the idea of going all in when you're a fringe playoff team. He's probably going to go all in this year as well. I do like the Sorokin extension. Varley extension probably is going to look bad in the past two years. He's just been giving out far too much term and going far too all in for a core that just that just doesn't have what it takes at this point, in my opinion, so I do think that he is a mad GM. Kevin Adams, a year ago, was looking very promising after locking up guys like Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins on very team-friendly deals with only $7.1 million, but you look at some of his off his additions this off that most recent off season, uh, Eric Johnson, bad, uh, Connor Clifton disaster. He's making $3.3 million in the next two years. So when looking at it, they were expected to take that next step. And in part, because Kevin Adams kind of fumbled some of his free agency pickups. I still think he's a solid general manager, especially the Jack Eichel deal was a massive win overall for the Buffalo Sabres, considering they were trading, obviously the better player and the better player that was it was a massive win-win for both parties. I still think Kevin Adams is solid, but nothing special. Rob Blake. Rob Blake honestly gets gets meh. The, the, recently, prior off-seasons, he was very good in terms of signing Deneau, signing or, or trading for Arvidsson, trading for Kevin Fiala. But this most recent off-season, you look at what he did. Pierre-Luc Dubois, he, he called his shot on that, and it has absolutely blown up in his face, as well as trading away Sean Walker, which I know they had to do that in order to get Gavrikov, but Sean Walker's playing absolutely fantastic. So recently, Rob Blake not figuring out the goalie situation for the most part, having to rely on a Cam Talbot that has kind of fallen off. Dave Riddick right now is your number one goalie for the most part. That is absolutely horrible horrifying and as a result I don't see the Kings as a legit contender come playoff time which I was expecting them to take that next step and be on the same level as a Vegas and an Edmonton has not happened Rob Blake kind of has failed the team Iserman Iserman I think you got to have an elite I've I've doubted the Iser plan before. I always thought Iserman was definitely a good general manager. My thing with the Iser plan was I didn't think that they were going to have like the best, best future in the Eastern Conference, which I still maybe would say. But when you look at what Iserman did, I almost said Iserman. When you look at what Iserman did this most recent offseason, Alex Lyon, two years, 900K. He's been fantastic. Uh, Sprong, one year, $2 million. He's going to put up like 45, 50 points. Got this bear, one year, 4.15. Uh, Comfort deals looking pretty solid. People really doubted that. He's been okay. I'm forgetting one other dirt cheap deal. I'm forgetting it, but I think he signed another fantastic deal overall. And when looking at it, locking up Larkin at $8.7 million is looking very good. The Brinkett trade, only giving up a first round pick in like Dominic Kubalik and then signing him to a four year 7.8. Although the Brinkett isn't like an actual 40 and 40 guy. He's still an elite first liner, a very good first liner. So when looking at Eiserman, I think he is, you look at what he did in Tampa, as well as it's starting to come together in Detroit for the most part. If you can continue to find these gems in free agency on one, two year deals, they're going to be in a good spot. Bill Gurren, I'm going to go very good. He's obviously dealt with very unfortunate circumstances that he had to inherit with the Parisi and uh, Ryan Suter contracts. I think he was the one that signed out on the buyouts, but obviously he didn't sign those all the way back in 2013. So they've been 
playing behind the eight ball, like 12, 14 million dollars the last couple of seasons. And although they haven't been that good of a team this year, they still are highly competitive, as well as Jared Spurgeon being out for basically the entire season. That kind of screwed them this year. He's got guys like um, Kaprizov only making $9 million. Uh, Matt Boldy just signed last year a 7 by 7 That's an absolute seal. Joel Erickson X only making $5.25 million, one of the best contracts in hockey. So in looking at it, I think once the wild salary cap problems are over, not next season, but the season after, they're going to be absolutely cooking because Bill, Billy G has put in all these fantastic deals for the Minnesota Wild. Next up, this video is going to be long. Jesus, we're already 10 minutes in. Jim Nell. Jim Nell, he is definitely in the elite category. Probably the best drafting track record since 2017. Not probably, honestly, without a doubt, considering he's not picking like 10th over, like top 10, not even top 15. You look at it. Uh, he ice skating was a high draft pick, but Roberts in 2019, Ottinger 2017, or Roberts in 2017, Ottinger 2017, as well as 2020, Maverick Bork 30th overall, Stan Coven 47th overall in 2021, uh, Wyatt Johnson 23rd overall in 2021. He's been absolutely fantastic, as well as signing guys like Matthew Shane to bring in, bring in some veteran presence, as well as Thomas Harley. I forgot him back in 2019. Jim Nell has built an absolutely fantastic core, one of the best top nines, and probably the best, the best top nine in all of hockey, in my opinion. He's a stud. Chris Drury. Chris Drury, I'm going to go with good. When you look at him, you can make an argument for very good if you go post first like couple weeks on the job when he signed Barkley Goudreau and traded Buchnevich for a second and Sammy Blay. But since then, I think he's been pretty solid. Obviously, the Rangers have had a ton of success most recently this season, getting Eric Gustafson on like a league minimum. Great. Uh, Jonathan Quick, fantastic. As well as Lafreniere on a bridge deal that looks like an absolute steal. Yes, there has been some unfortunate deals from... Uh, from Drury at the deadline in recent years. I didn't hate the Tarasenko. I didn't hate the Kane. But I think overall he does kind of get criticized a little bit too much considering he is in such a hot button market like the New York Rangers. Tom Fitzgerald. I'm also going to go with good, which yes, this year not addressing the goaltending is a really unforgivable uh, mistake, but you look at it since he got there, I believe in 2020, his draft record is pretty fantastic drafting guys like Holtz, Mercer, Luke Hughes, Simone Nemich. He's hit on most of his draft picks, as well as the fact that he signed the Jack Hughes to an eight year eight by eight. I'm not sure. He's, I don't think he signed the Nico Heischer contract, but for the most part, the Devils, I think going forward, as long as they can figure out their defense, their goaltending overall. I think they're in, they're in one of the best situations in the entire NHL. Traded for Siegenthal or traded goddamn Ty Smith for John Marino. I still think the Fitzgerald tenure on the whole has been a good success and going forward for the next five years, they're in a really good spot. Brad Living, he definitely gets a meh. Uh, guys like Bertuzzi and Domi are starting to play better, some of his pickups. But when you look at it, John Klingberg, absolute disaster for the most part. I've just kind of been underwhelmed. Labushkin trade, Third round pick for a guy like Ilya Labushkin, which I, I I was defending the Leafs. I didn't think it was the worst, worst trade ever, but it is an objectively bad trade. So when looking at Toronto, they're still a playoff team, but that's obviously because of their core pieces, not goddamn Bradshaw Living. So it has been pretty disappointing for Bradshaw Living early on. John Davidson, the Columbus Blue Jackets interim general manager. I'm just going to throw him in solid right now. It's kind of unfair. I think I have Steve Steos. Let me, let me actually get Steos. I'm just going to throw him in solid. Probably shouldn't even be on the list if I'm being honest. They, Steos has been on. Steos is going to be the full time guy, but he hasn't really done jack shit. And John Davidson, I assume at 71 years old, not going to get the full time job after the season. Can't really grade those guys. Don Waddell. Don Waddell is tough because the Hurricanes have been similar to Boston probably since 2017, the most successful non cup winning team in the entire NHL. But I think that's more Rod Brindamore, if I'm going to be honest. Don Waddell has not addressed the finishing problems on this team. And as a result, I'm not sure that they have the firepower to go on an extremely deep run. The number two center position has not been uh, has not been found the past couple of years. Goaltending is still a question mark. Kachetkov maybe could be that guy, but going into it, Anderson injury definitely has hurt them a lot, but that has kind of been a mistake, as well as Dmitry Orlov's contract, $7.75 million to improve your defense core when your defense core is already one of the best in the entire NHL. That was a head scratcher in the moment I said as much, and especially looks now bad now when you kind of have a second line center problem as well as a finishing problem overall. I think he's been solid though. The Svechnikov extension, very good. Sebastian Ajo's 9.75 extension, very good, as well as them having a pretty solid draft prospect draft prospect pool but I think this team should the last three deadlines they've basically done like really nothing at the deadline he needs to be more aggressive he needs to attack the problems on this team and I think they would have a chance to win the Stanley Cup but right now he hasn't in any given season even though they made the Eastern Conference Finals a couple times Kyle Davidson 
I'm like again, he's a rebuild. He's a rebuilding deep in a rebuild, and like, like as, as like as much as like tanking, they tanked for Connor Bedard. That was the plan. At the end of the day, that was more of a ping pong thing. I can't say. Kyle Davidson was a genius for deciding to tank in 2023. Everybody was. He has been very good trading Brandon Hagel for two first round picks. Fantastic work. Fantastic asset management. The McCabe. I'm actually no, because that's not because again, Chicago has not done anything besides really Connor Bedard. Kevin Korczynski is looking good. Lucas Reichel has been a little bit disappointing. Right now, I'm going to put Davidson in solid. Now I'm going to move him up to good. I, I, he's he's done. I, nah, I'm going to move it. But I don't think any of the rebuilding guys should be good or very good. Uh, Chris McFarland. You guys probably don't even know who this is. Chris McFarland obviously succeeded Joe Sackick in 2022 after they won the Stanley Cup. I've been a, I've been a bit disappointed by Chris McFarland. That 2022-2023 season, they weren't really sure if Landis Cog was going to come back. So we didn't really do much in terms of that. This summer, goes out, trade for Ryan Johansson to be your second round, second line center. That has been another disaster. He is not really worked out uh ross colton solid middle sixer i'm not sure he's a number two center on a legit cup contending team so i don't really think that he attacked the problems obvious problems with this as well as the goaltending taking a step back this year from alexander georgiev i have been a little bit disappointed but if he kills the deadline this year that'll definitely bump him up in this tier list kelly mccrimmon mccrimmon Got to have him in elite, especially obviously after winning Stanley Cup. But since he got there, they fired George McPhee after like their second season or something. It was absolutely insane. But he's been fantastic. Mark Stone deal. Petrangelo deal was a fat contract, but obviously he was a key piece to winning the Stanley Cup. Last year, manipulating the cap a little bit in order to get Ivan Barbashev. As I talked about in last last video for Zach Dean, a guy that has 12 points in 45 AHL games at 21 years old. Fantastic moves by him. Mike Greer. I'm going to put him in solid. Again, he's deeper, deeper in a rebuild and doesn't really have that kind of Bedard franchise, franchise level piece. I think he did a very good job with the Eric Carlson trade when looking at it. He's probably going to be able to uh, flip Grandland next, next, next deadline. Not, no, next deadline. No, I didn't mean to repeat next three times, but next deadline, considering he's doing very good this season. He's solid, but again, San Jose has such a long way to go. Chicago's also is a long way to go, but they're probably a year or two ahead just because Bedard's NHL ready. San Jose is a long way to go, and a lot can happen in that stretch. Patrick Alvin. Alvin, I'm going to go with very good. You look at it, although most of them this year is just their guys that were in there before Alvin got there. He really retooled the bottom six this offseason. Obviously, some of the defense core, like a Carson Soucy and Ian Cole. So he came in. He made a bunch of changes. He he didn't change the overall core of this team, but put the depth pieces around to be a high-level team this year. Goes out, get a Casey DeSmith, who's actually been pretty ass the last like five or six games. But for the most part, besides eight goal games, it's been okay. I think Alvin has been a very good general manager. The Lindholm, actually, I might bump him down because that Lindholm deal is looking pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm going to bump him down. He's, uh, yeah, he's good. Until they, they, they've only made the playoffs once under him. I'm going to bump him down to good as of right now. Julian Brisebois, I'm going to still go with elite. Yes, the Tanner Janot trade last year was kind of another disaster. But when you look at this guy's track record overall with the Tampa Bay Lightning, they are getting up there in age, so it is kind of hard for him. But right now, he's one of the guys that I would trust with my goddamn franchise. I think the track record is undeniable. Ron Francis, Solid. It's it's definitely going to be it's interesting to see what he does at this year's deadline. I personally probably would sell on most of your guys, get some assets. I feel like this core right now is not really good enough in Seattle, in part because he had a pretty average uh, trade deadline most recently. So Ron Francis, perfectly okay. Kent Hughes, I'm going to go with good. Another guy, kind of like Kyle Davidson, they haven't really done shit, but... I think a lot of his deals have worked out pretty well. You look at the Caul Caulfield extensions, Zuki's extensions are looking very good. Slavkovsky, everybody doubted that pick. He's playing fantastic of late. They got an elite prospect pool with guys like Ryan Bacher and Hudson. I'm going to go good right now. Danny Briere as well. Gets a good nod when looking at it. Philadelphia this year kind of came out of nowhere. They had a lot of depth pieces. Will Briere trade at this year's deadline? Definitely to be seen. I think he should probably trade it to Sean Walker. Don't give him goddamn $4.55 million. But overall, Danny Briere has drafted pretty solid. The Cutter Gauthier thing was obviously very unfortunate for him in the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, did he draft Gauthier? Yeah, he did draft Gauthier in 2022. 
No, he didn't. <laughs> he did not. He did not draft Gauthier. But still, that wasn't his fault. You can't really fault him for that because he didn't draft him. And obviously, Gauthier just won't even talk to them. Kevin Cheveldayoff. Kevin Cheveldayoff, I'm going to put him very good. Trading away Pierre-Luc Dubois was a fantastic move by him. Got Gabe Velarde. who has been straight up better this year. A second-round pick. Alex Ayafalo, as well as last year at the deadline. Nino Niederreiter for a second-round pick. He's been a key piece for them. As well as Sean Monahan this year. People kind of laughed at them for giving up a first-round pick. That pick's probably going to be like 20 7th, 28th overall, unless they make the Western Conference Finals. It'll be even later. And when looking at it, he's has like 8 goals in 13 games right now. It's absolutely insane. Ken Holland. Ken Holland definitely gets a meh. He's pretty good at the deadline when looking at like Matias Ekholm kind of trades, but overall, some of his offseason moves, some of his extensions have been just unacceptable like a Jack Campbell, like a Darnell Nurse, and it has really hampered the team. And then Pat Verbeek. Pat Verbeek, I'm going to go... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go good, just because I I think the the Anaheim Ducks still have like the best prospect, especially with the Cutter Gauthier trade this year. That may really elevated him, in my opinion. They have one of the best prospect pool, probably the best prospect pool in the entire NHL, in my opinion, right now. As well as and that's not even counting guys like a Pavel Minchikov, like a Carlson, McTavish, all of their young guys. That's not even part of their stuff anymore. They are absolutely loaded going forward, and Verbeek's a major reason why I believe he got in there in 2021 or 2022, and he has really elevated the Anaheim Ducks to now having one of the best futures in the entire NHL. So yeah, this is it. Um, I'm going to stick by it for the most part. I'm trying to think. Maybe I'd move... Who else? Who can I move? If you have, if you know what I'm saying, these are just teams that have kind of disappointed, in my opinion, or general managers. These are rebuilds or just like perfectly average. These are good rebuilds or teams that are highly competitive. Or competitive. Very good. I think it's fair. You can maybe move some good to very good, but I'm going to keep it the way it is. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.